the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated by independent research, the most popular West Coast program in radio history. In gasoline, you know, it takes extra quality to go farther. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story, Maid of Honor. It was mid-morning when Elaine left Nancy's apartment in the suburb and began the unbearable taxi ride across the city to Elmwood. The traffic was slowed down by a late February drizzle, and the clamoring horns, grinding gears, and clanging signal bells played along the raw edges of her nerves. Driver, can't you take another route? Can't you get out of this some way? Sorry, ma'am. You said you were in a hurry, and the fastest way to Elmwood's right through the center of town. She leaned back against the seat heavily, trying to relax so she could go over the whole scheme once more in her mind. The message, the phone call to Nancy, each incident had to fall into place like a scene from one of the thousands of radio scripts she'd read before the microphone. For Elaine Brand was a radio actress, and a great one, and she knew that each reaction, every word she said from now on, had to be convincing, because above all, no one must ever guess the truth. No one must ever know that Nancy Whitney was already dead when Elaine left Nancy's apartment that morning. It seemed a year before the taxi pulled up in front of the quiet house in Elmwood. But when Nancy's sister Margaret answered the bell and Elaine stepped into the hallway, she was ready for the greatest role of her career. And she was almost relieved when Margaret began it just as she had expected. Please, don't take off your coat, Elaine. I just can't talk today. Margaret, you've got to be reasonable about this. I came all the way across town. I'm just... sorry, Elaine. I'm not up to it today. If you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss it. You're going to discuss it. I'm not going to stand idly by and watch you ruin your sister's wedding. I told you I'm not feeling well. That convenient heart trouble of yours isn't going to get you out of it this time. Do you realize what you're doing, Margaret? Can you understand what this is doing to your sister? I understand everything. I'd rather see Nancy disappointed now than later. Disappointed? She's despondent. If you refuse to stand up with her tomorrow, I... I don't know what she'll do. She loves you, Margaret. You've been almost like a mother to her. For... Oh, why go through all that again? I disapprove of Bill Pendle. I don't want any part of that wedding. And that's all there is to it. That has nothing to do with it. It doesn't matter whether or not you disapprove of Bill. Nancy loves him. That's all that matters. They're going to be married tomorrow. And you're going to be a maid of honor if I have to drag you oh. there. I should think you'd have the common decency. Oh, please, to... please, Elaine. I don't want to hear any more. And don't tell me I don't love my sister. It means more to me than anything in the world. I hope you can convince Nancy of that. What do you mean? She ought to be here in a few minutes. I told her to come. Oh, why did you do that? Do I have to be tortured with it? Oh, stop being sorry for yourself. You're talking to a professional, darling. I know an act when I see one. There's Nancy now. Answer the door. I don't want to see her. Tell her I... I won't I... tell her anything. You just said you love her. Now you can prove it, Margaret. Go ahead. Answer the door. Oh. 
I have a message here for Miss Elaine Brand. Elaine? Is she here? Yes. Thank you. I'll, I'll give it to her. All right. Elaine? Yes? wasn't Nancy. It was a message for you. A message? How did anyone know that here. I... Here. From Nancy. Nancy? Why, is she... Good Lord. What is it? Dearest Elaine, I'm addressing this to you because I'm sure now you're the only friend I have left. I see now that marriage, like everything else I've ever wanted, would be wrong. And I've decided there's only one answer. No. Oh, no. It's a selfish way, I know, but I hope you'll try to understand and explain to Martha. No. The telephone, quick. She can't be doing this. Nancy would never do anything like this. She's doing it. Now maybe you see what I was talking about. Let me see the note. Go get your coat. We're going over there right now. Oh, Elaine. Elaine, I don't know what we can do. Hello. Hello. Nancy. It's Nancy. It is. Oh, thank heaven. I, I just got your note. Listen, darling, you're all wrong. Believe me, dear, you're making a terrible mistake. Margaret understands now. I've had a talk with her. And... You can't do it, Nancy. It's not fair to Bill or Margaret or any of us. You've got to promise me now. Don't make a move until we get there. We're leaving right now. Promise me that. Yes, dear. Of course. Let me talk to her. No, she hung up. Oh, Elaine, if anything should happen, we better call the police. No, it would get into the papers. She said she wouldn't do anything until we got there. Come on, Margaret. We've got to hurry. <laughs> And so the first scene has reached its climax, Elaine. And you were just as convincing as you'd planned. Another taxi takes you and Margaret back through the maddening snarl of traffic toward Nancy's. And when the taxi pulls up to the apartment entrance, and you see the manager talking to a man with a press badge, you take a firm grip on Margaret's arm and walk up to him, knowing what he's going to say. She's dead, Miss Brandt. They found her a half hour ago. Oh, no. Dead. Oh, you're wrong. Nancy wouldn't kill herself. She'd never do it. I know. Margaret, please, that's not going to do any good. Oh, I told you we should have telephoned the police. I told you Excuse we should me. have telephoned uh, the police. Excuse me. My name's Burkle, reporter on the Star News. Maybe I can help. Huh? Yes, of course. Excuse me. This is Miss Whitney's sister. I'm Miss Brand. What, what have they doing? done with her? Where is she? Well, you better not go up there now. The apartment's full of police. Police? What are they doing there? I wondered myself, Miss Brand, until I heard the lady say Miss Whitney wouldn't have done it. That's what they seem to think upstairs, too. They're right. Nancy couldn't do a thing like that. Why? Uh, Margaret's not herself, Mr. Burkle. We better... Now, wait a minute, Elaine. Wait a minute. Tell me, Mr. Burkle, what happened upstairs? Well, the maid discovered her when she went in to clean. Seems to have been some kind of fast-acting poison. A lot of things don't make sense, though. Only last night she called up and confirmed the order for the wedding flowers. She hardly would have done that if she were going to... What happened? Well, I don't know whether I should mention it, but they've got a suspect. A suspect? Yeah. Maid saw him walking away from the apartment just before she went in to find the body. She told the police he couldn't get in. But who was it? Who is it? Well, that's pretty obvious. The intended bridegroom, of course. Bill Pendle. Well, Elaine, there it is. Not quite the way you planned it, but there it is. They've got a convenient suspect, Bill Pendle. Or could it be that Bill Pendle was the motive for the murder? The reason for all your careful scheming? Margaret is standing there staring at you with a queer expression coming across her face. So you'd better think fast, Elaine. Bill... Bill Pendle? You mean he's under suspicion? That's right. Seems he talked himself into quite a hole, too. Said the reason he came to see her was the fight they had last night. He wanted to apologize. This is all ridiculous. We we know Nancy killed herself. I talked to her on the phone just a little while ago, pleaded with her to reconsider. Oh? Yes, and, and there was a note, a suicide note. It came to me at Margaret's by messenger. She said she was despondent, that Margaret didn't approve of Bill, and isn't that so, Margaret? So Mr. Pendle is accused of murdering my sister. He's at the DA's office right now, being questioned. If you know anything about it, you better get right over there. It's odd, isn't it? The groom killing the bride. Margaret, what are you talking about? He did kill her, you know. Margaret. What? Margaret, the, the telephone call, the, the note. You can't deny well, that. Wait a minute. 
You have this note with you? Why, uh, the note, I, I... I must have thrown it away. I, I was so excited and... Oh, I see. But Margaret will tell you. Tell him it's true. I'm sorry, Elaine. I don't know what you're talking about. What are you trying to do? It's very simple. I'm going to see that a murderer is brought to justice. With the prologue of Maid of Honor, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. But now, a word to you drivers. If you want to keep performance up and wear down during the months of hard summer driving ahead, it's time to see your signal dealer now for a spring changeover from winter-weary lubricants. Costly transmission and differential gears need the protection of fresh summer weight signal gear lube. For limbering up the chassis, there's no spring tonic like a signal double-check lube job. And, of course, your motor should be drained and refilled with fresh motor oil. Wait a minute, did I say motor oil? Well, don't you say motor oil. Be sure you say Signal Premium Motor Oil. For Signal Premium is the amazing new type lubricant that far outperforms the finest straight motor oils money can buy. You see, because Signal Premium combines five scientific new compounds with 100% pure paraffin base, it does more than just lubricate. In fact, tests prove Signal Premium actually keeps motors six times cleaner and reduces cylinder wear one-third, your guarantee of a sweeter running motor. But remember this, only signal service stations have this amazing new signal premium motor oil. A mighty good reason, I'd say, why there's just one place to take your car for this spring's changeover. Your neighborhood signal service station. And now, back to the whistler. That queer, tense expression on Margaret's face was the answer. Your whole plan is gone now. All your careful scheming is wasted. If it didn't have such tragic implications, you could almost laugh. You were willing to kill to keep Bill Pendle from going to the altar with someone else. And now he's being accused of the murder you so carefully committed. But you know that Margaret holds the key you know that somehow you've got to make her admit the truth about the note and the phone call. We're going to the district attorney's office, Margaret. Are you going to tell them the truth or aren't you? Oh, my heart. You're going to tell them, Margaret. Do you understand that? No. No, I'm not going to tell them anything. He killed her, Elaine. He's going to suffer for it. And you'd let him do it. You go on deliberately lying to see Bill Pendle brought to trial. Simply because you've always hated him. Nancy was my sister. I loved her. She'd be alive right now if it weren't for him. You're not going to get away with this, Margaret. Driver. Yes, ma'am? I've changed my mind. We're not going to the courthouse. Lane, what are you going to do? I'm taking Miss Whitney back to her home, driver. She's ill. That's 152 Milford Lane, Elmwood. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Lane, you can't. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> No use, Elaine. You can't change my mind. Bill Pendle is responsible for Nancy's death. He drove her to it. You know that's a lie. You heard that call to Nancy. You saw the note. I tell you, I don't want to talk anymore about it. All right, Margaret. Have it your way. But when we get into a courtroom, it'll be your word against mine. I'm not an actress for nothing, you know. I can be pretty convincing. I doubt that. Under the circumstances... What do you mean? The quarrel between Bill and Nancy. What's that got to do with me? Everything. It was about you. You're lying, Margaret. Sally Wright will back me up. She was there, you know. It was pretty ugly with Bill telling Nancy he wanted to walk out. That he was only going through with the wedding because he didn't want to hurt her. Margaret. Margaret, what are you saying? Bill is in love with you, Elaine. Oh, but there was nothing. Never. He, he hardly looked at That me. doesn't matter now. He told Nancy, 
That's enough. Believe me, I, I didn't know. Oh, you'll have to be pretty convincing to make them believe that. When it gets to the courtroom, you'll be the other woman fighting for the man you're in love with. Whom do you think they'll believe? You or me? You couldn't be low enough to use the thing. I'll do anything to see that Nancy's murderer is punished. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to lie down. Wait a minute, Margaret. I said I didn't want to talk about it. You're going to talk about it. Margaret, get away from that telephone. You won't leave me alone. I'm going to call You're the police. I'm not calling anyone. Give me that phone. <laughs> Just to make sure you don't try to use it again. <laughs> Well, I'll take care of it. You've broken the cord. Elaine, why are you doing this to me? Why? You're a sick woman, Margaret. Very sick. I'm going to stay here with you every minute and take care of you. <laughs> It's the only way, isn't it, Elaine? A man's life is at stake. And unless you can break Margaret down, make her admit to the note in your frantic call to Nancy, Bill Pendle will be indicted for murder. But you're still stunned, aren't you, Elaine? Horrified that this quarrel on the eve of the wedding placed you squarely between Nancy and Bill, made you a prejudiced witness in the eyes of the law, put Margaret in a position to hang him with a simple denial. And you haven't long to work on her. The moment that reporter's story comes out in the morning papers, they'll be calling on both of you to testify. It has to be fast, Elaine. An hour later, you walk into Margaret's room, find her in bed where you left her. Feeling better, dear? You're being very cruel, Elaine. It isn't fair Shh. to... You mustn't talk when you're so tired. Here, let me prop you up. I brought you some tea. Oh, well, if you decided to leave me alone... What have you decided, dear? About Bill? If you came in here to start on me again... No, 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 no. Come on, drink your tea. Oh, careful, it's hot. <sighs> I did need that. Did I make it just right? It's bitter. Did you put... Elaine, what's in this tea? What have you done? What's wrong, Margaret? You're thinking that someone else might be taking the law into his own hands? You poisoned it. You're, you're trying to kill me. Margaret, how can you say such a thing? Take it away, Elaine. Take it away. Oh, oh Margaret, your favorite china tool. Oh, please. Please, Elaine. Nothing's happened to you, Margaret. Just a dash of harmless bitters. Bitters? Is that all? That's all. For now, um... The excitement seems to have tired you, dear. Why don't you go back to sleep? Oh. Sleep. Sleep. Ah! Oh, did I wake you? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. It was a vase. I knocked it off the mantel. Oh. oh, it was a shame to interrupt your rest. I'll never get back to sleep now. Poor dear. Shall I fix you a sleeping powder? No, no, I don't. I don't want anything. Have you changed your mind, Mark? No, Elaine, no. I haven't changed my mind. It's going very slowly, isn't it, Elaine? Margaret is exhausted mentally and physically, but she isn't changing her mind about anything, only becoming more determined. And half an hour after the incident with the vase, she even manages to doze off again. You wait a long time before disturbing her again, until just the right moment. Then you walk over, open the door to her room, leave it ajar, and walk back through the living room to the front door. Then... I understand, Doctor. Yes, yes, I'll do everything you said. Oh, no, you needn't send a special nurse. I'd much rather tend to her myself. All right, Doctor. Goodbye, and thanks again for coming out. I know it's a long way. Margaret, what are you doing out of bed? What is it, Elaine? 
Who are you talking to? Please now, dear, we must get you back in bed. He'd be furious. Who, Elaine? Who are you talking about? Well, I guess she won't rest until I tell you. All right. It, um, it was a doctor, Margaret. I had to send for her. Uh, a doctor? Why? You were breathing so heavily, dear, I couldn't wake you. I was worn out, Elaine. You know that. Oh, but to sleep that soundly, right through the examination. The examination? Without even disturbing you, dear. Your condition is quite serious. You're lying. If it were true, you wouldn't tell me. I have to tell you, Margaret. If you know there isn't much time left for you, you might stop and think What about... did the doctor say? Please, Margaret, get back in bed. If something did go wrong, they... They might think I was careless. Well, I... I don't know what to think. Oh, Elaine, you couldn't be this cruel. If this is another one of your tricks... Whether you believe me or not, Margaret, you must get back in bed. I refuse to be responsible. Elaine, I can't stand any more of this. I can't, I can't. I'll... I'll tell the truth. Good. You'd better not change your mind, Margaret. If you do, you won't have a minute's rest. There'll be other nights. Long, sleepless nights. No, 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 Elaine. I'll, you're right. I see it now. Nancy really wouldn't have wanted you to put the blame on Bill. I know. I'll tell him, Elena. I'll tell the men from the district attorney. They'll be coming here this morning, as soon as that reporter prints his story. You can trust me, Elaine. I promise. Thank you, Margaret. Thank heaven you've come to your senses. <laughs> Well, Elaine, you've won. You can rest now. Relax in a chair in the living room and wait for morning. Sure that Bill Pendle will be in the clear. It's going to be all right either way now, isn't it? Margaret will tell the truth about the note and the phone call. Or she'll be so hysterical in denying it that they'll pass her off as an incompetent. At nine o'clock, the doorbell rings. You stir sleepily and then realize that it must be someone from the district attorney's office. You find yourself awake, preparing for their questions as you hurry to the front door. Oh, oh, I thought... Yeah, sorry to disturb you, but the company got a complaint that your telephone's out of order. The phone? Oh, oh, yes, yes, come in. We broke the cord last night. Broke it? Yes, um... Must have been badly worn or something. It just snapped right off the wall. Well, eh, well, I'll have a look. The phone's in the bedroom. I'll show you. Margaret? I'm ready, Elaine. It's just the phone man, dear. It's all right. You can go in now. Yeah, thanks. You're glad the telephone man awakened you. It gives you a little time to straighten up the living room, brush your hair, and freshen up a bit before the man from the district attorney's office arrives. Then, just as you finish putting on your lipstick, the doorbell rings again. Yes? Miss Whitney? She's inside. I'm Miss Brand. Oh, good. I wanted to talk to both of you. My name's Fraser, Miss Brand, district attorney's office. Oh, we've been expecting someone. Come right in, Mr. Fraser. Miss Whitney's been in bed since yesterday, the shock and all. Yes, I understand. Uh, would you wait here a moment? Sure. Margaret, he's here. You will tell the truth, won't you? I promised you last night, Elaine. I know, I but... realize more than ever now that it's important for me to tell them everything. Ask him to come in. <laughs> Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, I have something else I think will surprise you. As I mentioned last week, this spring marks the 25th anniversary of Signal Oil. So I've been digging through the records, and I came across some data that really opened my eyes. Of course, we all know that today's gasoline offers the highest octane and the finest performance in all history. But do you have any idea how much today's gasoline costs you per pound? Not per gallon, mind you, but per pound. Well, here on the coast, for instance, not counting the taxes that have been added to gasoline, regular grade signal costs only two and one-third cents per pound. 
Now, I've given you the pound price purposely so you can compare it with your cheapest vegetable, potatoes. Cost four cents per pound, compared with two and one-third cents for gasoline. Salt costs five cents per pound. Bread costs 11 cents per pound, compared with two and one-third cents for gasoline. That's why we say when you fill up with Signal's famous Go Farther gasoline, you're not only getting the tops in gasoline quality, you're also getting one of today's most remarkable values. And now back to the whistler. Well, Elaine, it's almost over now. Margaret has promised to tell the truth, to admit the phone call and the vanished suicide note from her sister Nancy. Somehow you feel you can trust her. Something in the new earnestness, the penitence in her face, tells you that at last she realizes the horror of what she almost did. And now that you've won, Elaine, you know the strain has had its effect on you, too. Yes, you're weary now as you sit on the bed, watching Mr. Frazier of the district attorney's office making notes in his black book while he listens to Margaret. Just a minute, Miss Whitney. You uh, say that a suicide note from your sister arrived here yesterday morning. That's right. I see. And Miss Brand here called her immediately. I heard her talking on the telephone. I tried to make a promise to do nothing until we arrived. You should have called the police immediately. I know that now. Well, what about this note, Miss Brand? Where is it? That's the stupid part of it all. I, I was so excited, I guess I threw it away. You've no idea where it is? I'm afraid not. Well, that was careless. On the contrary, Mr. Fraser, it was very wise. Margaret. Well, what does that mean? Just this, Mr. Fraser. Elaine destroyed that note because it was forgery. She wrote it herself, probably on the morning she killed my sister. That's a lie, Margaret. She's an invalid, Mr. Fraser. She's trying Just to... a minute. Go on, Miss Whitney. She sent it here by messenger, time to arrive just after she did. I... I almost did a terrible thing. I found out a few minutes ago what an awful mistake it would have been. You see, I... I felt that Mr. Pendle was responsible for Nancy's death. I was wrong. It was Elaine. What about that, Miss Brand? She's lying. That terrible, vicious mind... I her... haven't finished. You didn't ask me about that phone call, Mr. Fraser. It was a very polished performance, you know. Quite convincing. When you consider the fact that there was no one on the other end. I was talking to Nancy. No, Elaine, no. The repairman just told me my telephone has been out of order for two days. The line was dead yesterday morning when you put on that act for me. Well, Miss Brand? I... I don't know. I... I guess the act is over. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Monday at 9. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. Featured in tonight's story were Mary Lansing and Lurene Tuttle. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with music by Wilbur Hatch, story by Brian Thorne, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.